Once I realized that there was such a thing as collateral damage, I realized it was really being understudied, and particularly in women with metastatic disease. Because now you have people whose life has been foreshortened, and you really want it to have the best quality of life you can. So that's a metastatic collateral damage project is focused on documenting the collateral damage of having metastatic disease and its treatments. Right now, it's very popular to talk about patient reported outcomes, but I have a complaint about that because most of the time, it's doctors and researchers writing questions for patients to fill out, and so they miss a lot of things. So what we've done in our collateral damage project is actually go directly to the people who have the problem and let them write in free text whatever they want. There's now a lot of ability to analyze free text. Google does it all the time. And so we could let them write what was important to them and then pick out what the topics were rather than suggest the topics and see whether they had them or not. The first results of this project gave us a, a wealth of data. And as we started analyzing it, we realized a lot of our, our previous conceptions had been wrong. Um, and what we decided to do is have a think tank to really analyze the data. And the think tank was, on the one hand, people who had metastatic breast cancer and therefore could speak to the experience, men, women, different ethnicities, different ages. And likewise, then, we wanted to have a group of providers who could speak to how we could maybe change the system. But we didn't want just any old providers because I was afraid they would only do things that would be easy for them to do. I wanted people who had actually experienced cancer themselves. So we had provider survivors, people who had both had a cancer experience and were a provider of healthcare. And they all came together in a think tank last November, and we were able to really review all the data and start to come up with some recommendations and different insights into ways that we could fix it. For example, one of the things that really surprised me was it was very, the biggest complaint, or one of the biggest complaints um, of people with metastatic breast cancer were the people who had bone-only disease, that they only had their metastases in their bone. And I would have thought, as a clinician, that they would have less complaints because it's less life-threatening and um, you often can treat it with things other than chemotherapy. But in fact, what I disregarded was how it interfered with people's lives. One woman said, you know, I have to empty the dishwasher, it hurts my hip, so we now had to go to paper plates in our house. Now that's collateral damage that I would never have anticipated. We're still in the process of reviewing the data, but some of the recommendations are really quite interesting, and they come from other aspects of medicine. For example, in OB, they have doulas that help you through the process of, of labor, delivery, and birth, and are an adjunct to the obstetrician. If we had somebody like that to help the metastatic patient through the experience and help them remember what they have to remember, what questions to ask, remind them, that would be a big help. Or another is in geriatrics, where they do team approaches, because they realize that a lot of geriatric patients need not just um, physical therapy, occupational therapy, they need home health aids, they need all kinds of different aspects of medicine. So you put a team together that has multidisciplinary that can cover all the needs. We need to be able to apply this model now to people with metastatic breast cancer so that the quality of their lives is as good as we can make it. Thank you.